Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to all of you. Hope you all are fine. Be your science teacher from Ismailia Youth Services. Students, keep the instruction in your mind, which I have told you earlier that. Use hand free if you are using mobile. Use hand phone for computer use. Enter your ID and password properly. If there is any disconnectivity during the lecture due to the power breakdown, you are not supposed to leave the meeting. You should join the meeting again. I hope my all students have registered themselves to give online assessment. It is very important for you students. Inform your other classmates too if someone has not registered yet. Okay, my dear students, I'm sure you all have your science book and science copy. Today, we are going to start unit flowering and non-flowering plant. Yes, are you ready students? You will learn all these new scientific terms in this unit, which are the new words in this unit are gymnosperm, and just from spores, seedless, monocot, dicot, xylem, and phloem, taproot, fibrous root, net like when, cotyledons, and the last word is embryo. These all are the new scientific terms which are included in this unit. Okay, my dear. Okay, students. Um, have you ever uh, visited garden or nursery? You will see the, some plants with flowers or fruits, and some are, and some are without flowers. We will see many types of the plants in the garden. Students, actually the plants are classified into the many groups according to their structure. In your previous class, you have learned about the you have learned about the two types of the plants. In class four, you have learned about the higher plant, and the second is the simple plant. Okay, what are the simple plants? The simple plants are those that have black organ like the root, stem, leaf, flowers, and fruits. That are called the simple plants. And the second is what are the higher plants? These have a complex body with a complex organ, including roots, stems, leaf, and seed. And they have the flower and fruits like the conifer and flowering plants. Now our unit theme, as you know, the flowering and non-flowering plants. First we talk about the non-flowering plant. What are the non-flowering plants? These plants do not produce flowers. Some of them seedless plants, like the examples are algae, mosses, and fern. Actually, students, what are the mosses? The mosses look like a green carpet on land. The fern are the leafy plants and have a very developed vascular system. They have a special leaves that are called fern. Okay, now the second, in the, uh, move to the second slide. Some of them are seed bearing plants like the conifer. Their seeds are not enclosed in fruits and flowers, and they are called naked seed plants. And these are called a conifer. This is a picture of the conifer. You observe that, that they are the they are also the seed bearing plants, but their seeds are not enclosed in the fruits and flowers, and they are called the naked seed plants. And it is the 
Other examples of the conifer is cedar, spruce, fir, and pine. This is all the examples of the conifer. The conifer is also called the gymnosperm. This is a scientific term to use which the, the uh, plants have the naked seeds. It is called the gymnosperm plants. And these are the all examples of the gymno, uh, gymnosperm plants. Okay, dear students. Now move to the second slide. The second type of the plant is angiosperm. What is the means of the angio? Angio means case. Angio means case. And the sperm means seed. Okay? And now it is also called a flowering plant. The seed of flowering plants are enclosed in fruits or flowers. The students, more than half of plants present on earth belongs to this group. The flowers of some plants are bright and colorful to attract the insects for the pollination. So, what is the definition of the angiosperm? This is a very large group of the plants that produce flowers, and the seed of the flowering plants are enclosed in fruits or flowers. And you can observe this picture. The seed is enclosed in the fruit. You can see the seeds inside the fruit. This is the apple and it is the apple seeds and it is the the seeds is present inside the fruit. So this is the type of the plant that is called the angiosperm. And what are the angiosperm? The angiosperms are plants that produce flowers. Okay? Now, move to the next slides. Inside the seed. Students, so, um, and just uh, further divided into the two main groups on the basis of the seed structure. But firstly, we talk about the seed structure. Have you ever seen any type of seed? Observe this slide carefully. What are you seeing in this? This is the growing and germinated seed. Student, this bean seed is usually present in many homes. And the second slide, so you can observe that. If you observe, it is consisting of the many parts. Where is the many parts? This is a one part, you can see that. And the second part, you can see. And the third part, this one. In this slide, in this picture, you can see the first part is that. The second part is that. And the third part is that. And clearly you can observe the three main parts of the seed. The one part, the second part, and the third part. What are their names? Now see in the next slide. First is the seed coat. Second is and the sperm. And the third is embryo. And this is a picture of bean seed. You can clearly see the three main parts. The first is a seed coat around the seed. And the second is food store. That means the endosperm. And the third is embryo. Third is embryo. So first is seed coat. Second is endosperm. And the third is embryo. The first part is seed coat. Now, we will talk about the, what is the seed coat? It is the outer covering of the seed and protect internal structure of seed from injury and the dry out. Um, uh, when we see the seed coat which protects from the harsh weather and the condition in the hot and sunny days, or in extreme cold environment. So this is the 
outer covering of the seed and its perfect internal structure of the seed from the injury and the dry out. The second uh, part of the seed is endosperm. The second part is students endosperm. And what is the endosperm? The endosperm is it is the plant's food supply. It is the plant's food supply. It surrounds the growing embryo and provides food for it. The plant embryo, sometimes called the seed embryo, is a part of the seed that contains the earliest form of the plant. The embryo develops after fertilized. Adult plant plants and is generally contained within a seed or birds. So, what is the definition and how can we define the endosperm? It is the plant's food supply. It surrounds the growing embryo and provides food for it. Now, the next part is... You can see, observe, uh, you can observe this picture clearly. Seed coat, embryo, and the third is cotyledon. Now, what is the embryo? Uh, we are, uh, uh, actually, the, this uh, is uh, called the baby plant. It is also called the baby plant, which grows into the new plant when the conditions are right. Actually, the plant is consist of a, the seed is consist of the three, three main parts and it is the main important parts, it's called the embryo. And inside the embryo, the cotyledon is present. And what is the cotyledon? The cotyledon is an embryo leaf-like structure found inside the seed called cotyledon, which grows as the first leaves of the new plant when the seed germinates. What is the cotyledon? In embryos, leaf-like structure found inside the seed called cotyledon, which grows as the first leaves of the new plants when the seed germinates. Embryo has one or more leaf-like structure. These are the first leaves to appear from the germinating seed. It provides initial growth for the plant and as in energy sources. Okay, my dear students. Now, students, we are going to talk about the two main groups of the angiosperm means of flowering plants on the basis of seed structure. And what are they? This is the one is monocotyledon and the second is dicotyledon. Monocotyledon and dicotyledons are the two groups of the angiosperms. The mono means, mono means one, a di means two. Cotyledons, as you know, seed leaves. Cotyledon, seed leaves. It means that in group angiosperm, if the plant seed have one seed leaf, it is called the monocotyledon. And angiosperm, in the angiosperm group, if the plants have two seed leaf, it is called the dicotyledon. Okay? Okay. There are the some examples of the monocots, wheat, rice, and maize. What is the example? What are the examples of monocot students? Wheat, rice, and maize. And what are the examples of dicot? The first is bean seed. The second is rose and the third is gram. Okay, these are the examples of the monocots 
and the examples of the digot plants. Okay, move to the second slide. What are the difference between the monocot and the digot plants? How can we differ between the monocot and the digot plants? Yes. Look at uh, carefully this at this table. This will help us learn about the monocot and dicot plant. You can see that the seed of a monocot plant has only one seed leaf, means only one cotyledons. While dicot have two seed leaves, means two cotyledons. Okay, this is the difference between the monocots and the dicots. And the second is, what is the difference between the monocotyledons and the dicotyledon plants roots? Uh, first, we talk about the, what is the function of the roots. Uh, are you remembered? Uh, which you have studied in the class 4. Okay, just quick review. Roots are the underground parts of the plant and they hold plant firmly to the ground and take in water and mineral salt from the soil or surrounding. Okay, students, now observe these two types of the roots. Okay, students, look carefully two types of the roots. Monocot plants have fibrous roots. Monocot have fibrous roots. Means have many roots of about the same sizes. Okay? It means that it ha they have many roots about the same sizes. You can observe the fibrous root in your daily life. You plant of spring onion, grasses, and the plant of leaf. Now, look at the dicot root. It is called the tap root. What is the tap root system? They have the main roots with many small roots branching from it. You can see that the main roots and have the many small branches of it. Okay? Observe that. This is the big difference between the monocot and the dicot. You can observe the tap roots in your daily life observation to see the carrot leaf, turnip, and the radish leaf. Okay, my dear students. Now move to the second part of the plant. What is the second part of the plant? This is the stem. Um, First, we will talk about the stem, stem and its function. Inside the stem, there are the many tubes that carry water, minerals, salts, and foods from the one part of the plant to another. The stem carries or transports materials around the plant. Each vascular bundle consists of the two tubes, xylem and phloem. Phloem, what is the function of the phloem? It is present on the outside of the outside of the each vascular system. It is responsible for the distribution of the food material from the leaves to the various parts of the plant body. And what is the function of the xylem? It is a complex tissue which is help in the conduction of the water from the roots to the upper parts of the plant. In monocot plant, you can observe that in monocot plant, the vascular bundles are scattered. It means that the xylem and phloem are scattered. You can observe that in this picture. You can see it. But in the dicot plant, the xylem and phloem bundles in a well organized like a ring. You can observe that. 
first you can see the stem of the monocotyl uh, vascular bundle xylem and phloem which are the scattered in form and the second in the dicot line the xylem and phloem are well organized like a ring okay now the second the next part is the leaf you can observe these two pictures uh, this is the monocot leaf and this is the dicot leaf the leaf of monocot plants have parallel veins their leaves have veins running along each other you can observe the students their leaves have veins running along each other and the examples are the orchid leaf and in the dicot plant have net like vein for example the hippocampus leaf have one main vein in the middle you can observe that and branches out into the smaller veins forming a network of veins okay so in monocot the leaf have parallel vein in dicot plant the leaf have network of veins this is the bigger difference between the monocot and dicot plants now the last part very bright and colorful part of the plant is flower do you like flowers students i know all students like the flowers uh actually if a flower has three petals or the multiple of three listen carefully if a flower has three petals or multiple of three it is the flowers of monocot plant but if the flower has the number of petal that can be divided by the four or five it is the flower of plant dicot plant hurry up count the petals of the monocot and dicot yes 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is the multiple of 3 so this is the flower of monocot plants and counted hurry up students 1 2 3 Four, five. Yes, this is the flower of dicot plants. So this is the difference between the monocot plant and dicot plant. Okay, as we have discussed, in the stem there is a transport system. This is called the vascular system. In your book, the question is, what do you know about the vascular? vascular system this is the answer i have given in this slide the stem has a transport system called a vascular system it consists of two tubes xylem carry water and phloem carry food around the plant this is the answer is what is the vascular system okay take a screenshot hurry up students okay my dear students now in your book on page number 52 list of plant we use in our daily life as a food item or other uses which comes from the monocot plant and dicot plants the answer is monocot rice corn wheat grasses banana and bamboos and in dicot plants the sunflower beans peas peanuts rose and sugarcane okay this this is the answer of this activity which are present in your book on the page number 52 and it is the activity and this content is not present in your book so please student take a screenshot now 
conclusion plant classification the plants are divided into the non flowering plants that means it's spore bearing and the second and flowering plants mean the gymnosperm and the angiosperm but gymnosperm that is not a flowering plants and that have the naked seeds but in the angiosperm that have the one seed leaf and the second type is which are called the dicot that are the two seed leaves one is monocot and the second is dicot in non flowering plants there are no roots no stem no flowers and the examples are the mosses with roots are called the fern and this is the answer of the how we differentiate between the monocotyledon and the dicotyledon it has a one it has one cotyledon in one cotyledons and the dicotyledon is at two cotyledons the xylem and phloem the xylem and phloem are very organized like a ring this is the answer this is the answer of differentiate between the monocotyledon and dicotyledon hurry up student take a screenshot now it is the time of homework book work is do exercise a that is the column matching and it is present on page number 49 and do exercise number b circle the correct answer which is present on your book page number 15 and do exercise c question number 2 question number 3 question number 4 on page number 51 and do exercise d crossword puzzle which are present on your page number 52 students this is only the book work you should do this work with the blue ink pen on the book okay now what are the copy work define the following terms seed coat and a sperm embryo and gymnosperm gymnosperm cotyledons and the answer on present page number 46 47 okay all of you got it what are the question number 2 what do you need by the vascular system understand vascular system answer given in page number 48 and you can also see the slide and question number 3 differentiate between the monocotyledons and dicotyledons and the answer is given in page number 48 and 49 and answer is also given in the slides okay my dear students you all i hope you all have got it and at the last the read unit sound and underline the difficult word because we will inshallah start the new unit sound very interesting chapter and hope so you all have got it and understood very well jazakallah thank you very much allah hafiz